Some applications will require integration be extended to three-dimensional domains. So for example, if we wanted to find the mass of a sphere that had a density proportional to the distance from the center of the sphere, this is a type of problem that requires integration. So that means we're going to have to extend the subdivision concept to three-dimensional regions. So let's consider a box in R3, and it will be defined by this Cartesian product. And so we will talk about the following region, and we'll try to illustrate it as best we can with our usual x, y, z axes. So here we'll have our A and B, C and D. Here's R and S. We will end up having some sort of box that does the following. If we have a function f that's defined over some region in R3 and outputs a real number, so let's say it's defined as the following, what we are interested in is what we're going to call the hypervolume of the function over this region b. Now, we can't visualize this situation because we need four spatial dimensions to do so. We need three for the input domain and an extra spatial variable for the output domain. But nonetheless, the concepts we've developed for integration can still apply here almost directly. As before, what we need to do is create some partitions. So we will take an x partition to start with x0, x1, all the way up to xn, where some generic point will be a plus i delta x. And delta x will be subdivided into n subintervals. So this will be what's called a regular partition. We will do exactly the same thing for y. We'll go all the way up to yn. y will be indexed by the letter j. And we'll have this delta y being, once again, a regular partition with the same number of subdivisions. And z will also be defined in the same way, partitioned with the same number of variables. K will be the index here. It will go from R plus K delta Z, and delta Z will simply be this quantity right here. What we are doing is creating subdivisions in each of these coordinate directions. And these will extend in three dimensions now. And what we've done is created a series of little boxes. So there will be some small box within here, box B, I, J, K. This generic box will go from xi minus 1 up to xi, yj minus 1 to yj, zk minus 1 to zk. So it will be all the points formed in that Cartesian product. What we're going to do is determine the hypervolume of our function over this box. So that means we're going to define some sort of sample point. We'll call xi star, yj star, and zk star. Now that sample point can be anywhere within this box. xi star lives somewhere between those values for x. The yj star lives somewhere between those values for y. And the zk star lives somewhere between those values for z. We are going to approximate the hypervolume of our function over this box b, i, j, k. As always, take the value of the function to be a constant dependent on that sample point. So we will pick one location over that box and then multiply by the volume of that box, delta x, delta y, delta z, multiplied together. So as before, this will be our delta y, this will be our delta x, and this will be our delta z. The total hypervolume of f over all of these b's, approximately a sum i equals 1 to n, a sum j equals 1 to n, a sum k equals 1 to n, of all of these individual hypervolumes over each box. This is a Riemann sum. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise to you. It is the same process that we always do. Now, we are going to define the true hypervolume as a limit of this Riemann sum. Just going to put in this exact same quantity here. This will be the definition of the hypervolume if this limit exists. As before, it can be shown that if f is continuous over this box b, or if f is p 
piecewise continuous over this box B, it will be sufficient for this limit to exist. Now, piecewise continuous means a finite number of points or curves or surfaces of discontinuity. Then we will say that this function is integrable and this limit exists. And that means we will define what's called a triple integral of f over this box b as simply that limit of the Riemann sum. So we will write it like this. Triple integral of f dv is the limit of that triple Riemann sum. So there shouldn't be any surprise to us. It's exactly an extension of the concept of integration from one dimension and two dimensions. And now we are simply taking our integration domain to be in three dimensions. So this will be our definition of a triple integral. As before, you can prove the following properties. We'll have our usual linearity properties. So if we have a triple integral of a constant times a function over some rectangular box region, we can simply take out that constant. The integration of a sum or difference of two functions, it will end up being the sum or difference of the triple integrals. And most importantly for us here, integrating over some B, where B is a union of disjoint boxes, then the triple integral is a sum of all of these triple integrals over these individual regions. Now, this is exactly the kind of property that held for single and double integrals, and naturally it will hold here by the similarity of the definition. Fubini's theorem also holds. In this case, what Fubini's theorem says is that we can evaluate a triple integral as a series of iterated integrals. So for example, we could integrate with respect to x first, then y, then z. Remember, we start inside and we work our way out. Because there are three variables, it turns out that there are six possibilities. You could integrate x, y, z, x, z, y. You could go y, x, z, y, z, x. And finally, you could go z, y, x, z, x, y. Any one of these is going to produce the same value. The choice depends on the problem, depends on the function and on the region that we've chosen. We can use the above definition and we can simply replace our function with density, rho of x, y, and z. The mass of a box B is simply going to be the triple integral of the density defined over that rectangular box. As a very simple example, let's talk about a solid box B bounded by the planes x equals 0 and x equals 3, y equals 0 and y equals 2, z equals 0 and z equals 1. We have a density in this box of 2 minus z. So let's find the mass of the box. Now, this is a relatively straightforward example here. The mass of the box is simply going to be this triple integral. And we can choose to integrate with respect to any variable first. So let's try going with respect to z first and then working our way out y to x. So we will have the following. We'll have rho dz dy dx. So our z integral will be first, 2 minus z dz dy dx. This antiderivative will produce a 2z minus a z squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. It's simply going to be 2 minus a half, which is 3 halves. So then the mass becomes an integral 0 to 3, 0 to 2 of 3 halves dy dx, which is an integral of 3 halves y evaluated from 0 to 2 dx. This is simply 3 dx, which ends up producing a 9. So the mass of this object would be 9 kilograms. Now, of course, if our function was equal to 1 in a triple integral, then the triple integral would simply produce the volume of this box, 